Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to change out the lower control arm on an Audi Q7. This is a 2007 model, but it should be relevant at least through 2009. Um, so as you can see, uh, I've got a brand new lower control arm here. Now, I've already taken mine out, and I'd just like to go over a few things for how to do that. Okay, the instructions here say that you'll need tensioner hooks. Um, what you can use for these are the battery uh, clamp hold downs, and I'll show those to you, uh, that you can get them at auto parts store for five or five or six bucks. The ball joint removal tool, I bought a universal one online for $20. Uh, this exact tool costs about $170 on eBay, so uh, you, if you want to do that, then uh, I'll show you the one that I got. Uh, an elbow wrench, I didn't have this, but I was able to use, um, I'll show you the wrenches I was able to use, and a torque wrench. Okay, so what you wanna do here is, if you have air suspension, here's the instructions for that. I got to skip that part. So I did not loosen the outer drive axle threaded connection. Reason being, this nut, which, down here is torqued to retorque this back um, is 500 newton meters which is about 369 foot pounds um, I don't have a torque wrench that even goes close to that high and I don't know if you do but chances are you don't because most of the ones they sell in the store only go up to 250 pounds so you're gonna have to buy a really expensive torque wrench if you want to do that so I try to do this I pretty much took a strategy of trying to do this without having to loosen the axle nut. And I was able to accomplish it. So I'll show you how I did it. So you're gonna remove the wheel. The wheel housing liner, that is right here. And that was easy to remove. So um, that just goes you know, up around this area. And I think there was maybe, well, I'll show you. It was pretty much all these screws right here that I pulled out to get that out. It was easy. Okay, so you, once you do that, then it says, okay, you're gonna take your hook tensioner hooks. Now, if you've ever seen these, it's like a, it's kind of like a J hook at the end. Um, so they, okay, so I'll show you how I did this. So it's this thing right here. You're holding up your upper control arm. You wanna put a little bit of tension on there so that this doesn't move um, since it is connected to your lower control arm. When you remove the lower control arm, there's gonna be pressure on this to come downward, and you wanna make sure that you're holding tension to hold that in place. So let me show you how I did that. Okay, so um, I had two different kind of sizes. I think you probably only need one because this one's still kind of loose and, and it doesn't even seem like it's got the tension in it, but um, I needed a 12 inch. This was 10 inch, um, and I didn't figure out about this hole until it was too late, but um, there was a rubber boot, which looks like this right here, and that was up in the very top. It was right there, so I pulled that out, and then you can put this through. Um, but in your upper control arm, you're going to have two holes, one on each side, and that's how you do that. So I just zipped it up here, put a little bit of tension on there. Okay, so next step here would be... They say, okay, and that's them saying lightly pretension the control arm oh, right there. So now they're saying unscrew the bolt here for one and two. Okay, so I did, so I did this bolt. Sorry. Um, so I just used, uh, you know, a wrench on one side, pop that bolt out. It's really easy to do. Um, I mean, it is really tight. If you have an impact wrench, I would recommend it, or a breaker bar because that's really tight one. Um, and then. This part, um, this part's a little bit tricky. Uh, removing the ball stud uh, using the ball joint removal tool. Okay, so this is the OEM part, which the, I'll show you the one that I have. It doesn't look like this. Okay, hold on. Okay, here's the one that I bought on Amazon for $21. Um, I can post a link in my comments below, but uh, it's just like this, universal. Now what I had to do was I had to use a Dremel tool 
uh, along with this bit, uh, any bit that you have to grind metal. This is just what I had. Um, anyhow, so I grinded the inside quite a bit. I mean, quite a bit down here and, and right here, especially on the front parts. Um, I grinded down, honestly, a, a pretty good bit. I mean, it might have come out, I don't know how much on each side, but anyhow, it took me a while, but if I would have had a better grinding bit, it would have been faster. But um, uh, I had to do that because, let me show you. When you go down on, you figure it's sitting in there like that. Oops, sorry. When you go to go down in there, it has to be able to grab around enough so that when you when you gently tap it with a hammer, it can slide in. I can't do this one-handed, but it can slide inward like that. When I first got the part, you know, it was just the well, opening wasn't wide enough. So that's what I did. And then I was able to gently tap it with a hammer to get it in that far. Okay, and then when you get enough clearance on the bottom part where the this thing is uh, under that enough, you can torque this down. Now one more point about this, the, the gap this way on this part right here um, on my tool went two inches and one eighth of an inch. That's what they advertised on the website. I never actually measured it, but that's what they they said so two and one eighth inch and you pretty much need that um, they sell tools that have a two inch opening I measured mine before I bought the tool and it was pretty much exactly two inches so I, I bought the bit one that had an extra eighth of an inch but just be, be mindful of that okay so after you apply pressure and you pop this out um, you don't have enough room to pull it out because guess what your uh, the boot uh, for the CV join is is in the way there's not enough clearance so here's how I got around not having to do the axle um, in the instructions they tell you to do this part first and remove the nut which uh, you would have to undo the axle and push this part inward to be able to have enough clearance to do that then they say lower this part of the control arm down to the ground and then undo these two bolts here that hold the back. I just did it in reverse order. I, I took these bolts out first, then I rotated the back part down and over so it was to on an angle and I'll show you. Okay you can see this this um, round part that comes sticks up like that. That was really the key was once you get it down so that it's it's kind of like this but it's sticking in there um, I was able to rotate it over to the sideways and kind of up and then I was able to get enough clearance to pull it out sideways so that I could clear this boot right here so it, it was able to come out I'm trying to get a good angle like that so it's able to kind of come out this way like that now a couple other side notes, I'm pretty much done, so that's how you do it, that's how you get it out. But just a couple quick uh, tips, uh, problems that I ran into along the, the way. I did use a jack to help when, when lowering it down. These things are really heavy. I don't know how much they weigh, they're, they're pretty much pure steel. Um, so they're pretty heavy, but anyway, I used this floor jack to help lower it down in the back and help balance it out while I was doing. Um, okay, so here's the, two, here's the two bolts that hold it in the back and um so th this one is the other one so as you can see i had to cut my bolt which really sucked um and here's why that happened so the bolts go through the back of the control arm and they have this uh, really unique um washer on there this is used for the people that are doing the alignment on your car um i don't know how they work but um, that's what they look like and this has a groove and so that that tab part sits in that groove and anyway when they're spinning around because this isn't in the center it kind of is like an oblong and when you rotate it a certain way it'll actually move the whole control arm a little bit so that's how they work um, when I was trying to get these out so they stick through the back there and 
you know, the, the head is over here on the left side always on both, uh, both of them. And then the, or I believe it was, I can't remember now, but anyway, on the other side is the washer. You pretty much, this is the one where I had to break it or I had to cut through it. Um, you're pretty much going to need, there's no clearance for a socket on this side. So you're not going to be able to get a socket in there. Even a small socket won't fit. Um, here's one of my small sockets that's one and a half inches. And even with this, when you put it on the bolt, you won't have enough room to put your ratchet in there. At least I didn't. So um, you're pretty much going to need one of these on one side. And probably one, I bought two of them so that I could put one on both sides. That's how I did it. Uh, you can figure that out for yourself. But um, you're probably going to, I would recommend a long screwdriver. This was really helpful. Um, and just going in and just popping up, prying up that uh, washer because it's going to be stuck against this plate. Even when you get the nut off, it's still going to be stuck against the plate and you're going to have to, and there's a tab. It's, there's a tab that's just already part of, of this part right here. Let's see if I can get over far enough to get, show this to you. So you can see that there is a tab right here and one on the other side. So you're going to have to put the screwdriver above that to pop that that washer out and then you're just gonna have to work it I just use two screwdrivers one on the bottom and one on the top and I just kind of alternated alternately worked it out like up down up down up down to pop that out that's the best way one thing you don't want to do is what I did I was trying to spin I was trying to unscrew this while I was trying to undo the um, washer at the same time and what happened was, I don't know how it happened, but this, this actually got spun into the threads. And then when I tried to pry it out with the um, screwdriver, it went right through the other side of the threads and got totally jammed into place and made it impossible for me to get it out of there. So these, I called the dealer today. These are $11 for a new bolt and $5 for a new um, washer. So there you go. I hope this video helped you. Um, please give me a like if you liked it and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.